Your Excellency Cyril Ramaphosa, President of the Republic of South Africa and Chair of the 15th BRICS Summit. Your Excellencies, distinguished chief state and governments of the Global South, ministers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Gathered here for the third BRICS Africa Outreach and BRICS Plus Dialogue alongside the 15th BRICS Summit. I convey warm greetings from His Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu of Nigeria. Regrettably, due to pressing official matters at home, he couldn't join us today. President Tinubu, on behalf of the government and people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, extends our deepest gratitude to the government and people of the Republic of South Africa for convening the 15th BRICS Summit and bringing together stakeholders from around the world. We are also witnesses to the host's warm hospitality, and my delegation and I are grateful to you for providing a home in Johannesburg for your brothers and sisters from the other edge of the Atlantic. The prevailing theme of this summit, BRICS and Africa, Partnership for Mutually Accelerated Growth, Sustainable development and inclusive multilateralism resonates as a compass guiding the trajectory of the world. It underscores the profound realization that the cornerstone of stability within our intricate multipolar landscape lies in fostering developmental partnerships. Your Excellencies, the disruptive events of the past and present years have rendered emerging economies and many developing countries vulnerable, leaving them in search of beneficial alliances. But I assure you that Nigeria is committed to shaping and fortifying the global framework and governance concerning all major international issues, particularly in the fields of economics, finance, environment, climate change, bridging the digital divide, adopting a comprehensive strategy towards debt alleviation, addressing food and energy insecurities, instituting post-pandemic recovery measures, and fostering financial inclusion within developing countries. Your Excellencies, the international global governance structure to which we currently adhere was established prior to the independence of the African continent and many countries in the global south. So it's indeed imperative to reform global governance to align with the realities of today's world and to acknowledge the necessity for partnerships that ensure shared prosperity, inclusivity, and sustainable development. Your Excellencies, the trajectory of President Tinubu's economic reforms and diplomatic alliances is intended to attract investments and partnerships to Nigeria while aligning with international and regional cooperation that corresponds with the government's objectives. The new government, which began less than three months ago, is examining the variables and evaluating the scope and level of regional and global cooperation to pursue in order to establish Nigeria as a desired friend and partner. The government's final decisions will be determined once our ongoing in-depth discussions within the Economic Advisory Council the National Assembly and the Executive Council are concluded and adopted. It is needless to add that Nigeria is Africa's largest economy and with a population of 120 million people, is undoubtedly the most populous country in Africa. Mr. Chairman, as we approach the target completion date of the Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals, the reality of achieving the SDGs remain bleak for many countries, especially developing ones. These nations confront historical developmental vulnerabilities and challenges that are beyond their control. Thus, it is imperative for us to unite within regional groups and forge a Nobel form of international cooperation. This endeavor aims to foster global economic governance reform while enhancing the representation and voice of emerging market economies or developing countries. Your Excellencies in a multipolar world, creating mutually beneficial partnerships is challenging 
but can be overcome through proper alliances, realignments, and use of rules-based multilateralism. The key is to establish effective partnerships that could effectively respond to these challenges. Based on one, harnessing the agricultural potential of our nations. Two, harnessing renewable energy to revolutionize Africa. Three, fostering technology, innovation, and job prospect for holistic and equitable progress. Four, collaborative efforts on climate change and nature-centered approaches to development. Five, strengthening vibrant private sector participation among countries of the global south. And six, nurturing youth employment and skill building as a deterrent against terrorism, organized crime, and related challenges. Seven, proactive crisis management and heightened resilience. And lastly, promoting proactive involvement of business leadership in shaping and improve an ideal landscape for trade and economic exchanges in the global south. We therefore look forward to working closely with BRICS members and other regional alliances. Our aim is to join forces with nations sharing our vision. Our aim is to foster a partnership aimed at expediting growth and sustainable development across the African continent and the global south. Thank you very much for listening.